start this video off with a Bob Marley quote. The problem is people are being hated when they are real and are being loved when they are fake. It's a Bob Marley quote. I'm going to repeat that. The problem is people are being hated when they are real and are being loved when they are fake. The tender swindler. Simon, whatever his name is, Leviev. If that's his name, I can't even, I don't know what his real name is off the top of my head. The Tender Swindler. Um, it was like a, it, w it was, it was a, a, not the best documentary, but it, it was a documentary that I think revealed a lot of truths about our society, about like, you know, the society that we live in and the values that we have and the susceptibilities that we have because of those values. Um, I think that we put too much emphasis in material objects and into perceptions and the things that are transitory and the things that are, are not permanent and the things that are not truly meaningful. I think the reason for that is because of what Jean Boudrillard, who's a, um, like a French philosopher, who um, this book was like one of the, um, the contributing ideologies to the original matrix trilogy for the new pile of garbage but um the death of the real and then and in the book simulacra and simulation a simulacra is a is a part of the simulation it's a symbol it's just one piece is a piece of the simulation so if you think about a video game a simulacra could be the player that you play with and you know, if you look at that player that we play with in video games, that simulacra could be used to represent the whole simulation. So like Super Mario would be an example of a simulacra that we use to represent, you know, the whole simulation of Super Mario Brothers. So I think that happens in real life, where we take these simulacra and use them to represent larger concepts. We will take um, material objects like cars or jewelry, and we'll use those material objects to represent wealth. Will say, oh, this person has a nice car, so they must be rich. And that creates a susceptibility to be um, deceived, to be kind, to be scammed by people who know how to use possession or um, perceived possession of material objects in order to create the um, appearance of wealth. That's usually what um, scammers or con artists like to do. One of the first rules of, of um, I guess, the scam, scam or like con game is that you can only scam or con somebody who's looking for something for nothing. You can only scam or con somebody who's already inherently selfish. So if you look at it like Las Vegas, gamblers are looking for something for nothing. That's why they're the perfect sucker. They're already selfish. They're looking for something nothing for nothing and they're willing to risk it. You look at these women on these dating apps, they're looking for something for nothing looking to meet a guy who's going to take them out and um, give them these experiences for no real or meaningful connection where they're also connecting similarly with hundreds of other people. And he is the perfect con because all these women are looking for an over-materialized fake guy. People don't value the real anymore. People don't value the work, they value the result. They don't value the journey, they value the destination. Um, John F. Kennedy has a quote. The great enemy of truth is very often not the lie, deliberate, contrived, and dishonest, but the myth, persistent, persuasive, and unrealistic. Too often we hold fast to cliches of our forebears. We subject all facts to a prefabricated set of interpretations. I'll repeat that. We subject all facts to a prefabricated set of interpretations. We enjoy the comfort of our opinion without the discomfort of thought. So we enjoy the comfort of easy associations. For example, I was in a store today. I was in a poppy store, a Dominican store. On the East Coast, I guess we call them poppy store. Markets don't, supermarkets don't give you bags anymore. So I had just came from the supermarket and I had a dozen organic eggs. I stopped in a poppy store to get some backwoods. Pop it, let me get some backwoods. I pay for the backwoods. He sees me holding the eggs. He's staring at me with the eggs. I'm actually waiting for my change. I'm like, what is he staring at me for? 
guy who's in the store, I guess he goes to the store a lot. He says, he thinks you got those eggs from this store. Poppy, you know y'all don't even sell organic eggs. He said, actually, Poppy, y'all keep the eggs behind the counter, so there's no way he could have got the eggs. So he was thinking, somehow I, I had eggs and I was trying not to pay for them. When it wouldn't even have been possible for me to get to the eggs. But he's associating a symbol of my build, tall, athletic, my beard, with, I don't know, being slick. I don't know, being a thief on, on some level. You're not going to look at me and no, I actually have an accounting degree. I actually went to a nationally ranked business program and graduated at the top of my class. You're not going to look at me and know that. You're going to look at how I dress, how I carry myself, and associate me with different things. A finesse, a thief, a gorilla, whatever, whatever have you. So, a lot of the time, we do that in our society. And this is the same reason the women on Tinder associated the scammer, Simon, with a man of high value because he had designer sweaters, cars, which could easily be rented, sweaters, which you can easily go on a credit card debt for. People don't, people are too lazy to actually think, to actually understand things, to actually, to actually get to know people, to actually take time. Like, why would you spend hundreds of thousands of dollars on somebody that you just met? Why? Because you think that it's going to come with millions of dollars for you. This is how scammers work. They look for people. They prey on people who are looking for something for nothing. Scammers don't prey on honest people. Getting back to my point. Today we live in a world where we base more on symbol than we base on reality. We put more emphasis on things with a perceived value. And we don't take the time to examine and ascertain the actual value and nature of a thing. Whether that be a person, whether that be a resource, an asset, a concept. We do this with love. We do this with money. We do this with our perception of, of different people. We're trained to do this in school. If you look at how maps work, like my shirt is a map. This is a map from the 1700s. If you look at how maps work... Maps are inaccurate representations of the earth. You can't really tell so much by this map. But maps have a European bias. Maps make European countries look bigger than they actually are because you can't accurately depict a three-dimensional object on a two-dimensional surface because of dimensionality, stretching, contour, and thing like, things like that that go beyond the scope of this video. You can't accurately do that. But most maps make Africa, South America, Places where darker people live look smaller and make places like Europe and North America where lighter people live look bigger. It throws our perception of things off. Only accurate way to depict our planet and the relative size of the continents is a globe. You can't do that with a flat object. Jean Boudriard in his book Simulacra and Simulation uses the example of a map. The moment a map is created because of geopolitical affairs, that map can become inaccurate because after the map is created, think about a map from the 1700s. It won't look like a map from the day because there will be political changes. Countries will change. Countries will be dissolved. Wars will happen. But we will use our perception or we will cast our perception based on usually antiquated notions. And we'll use that perception and we'll create a pervasive reality around that perception. And that is what John F. Kennedy was John F. Kennedy was describing in his quote where he said, We subject all facts to a prefabricated set of interpretations. So when I was in the Poppy store, Poppy was subjecting me to a prefabricated set of interpretations. He has eggs, he doesn't have a bag, maybe he got them. He got them from this store, even though it wouldn't have been possible. And they don't even sell that type of eggs, just like an attender swindler. This guy has money. He's young. He seems to be healthy. What does he want with you? What does he want with a woman he don't know? People are always looking for more than what they deserve. Whereas the way to be wealthy with your mate is to find the right person and grow with them and build with them. That's the way to be wealthy. That's the way to be winning. It's to form the right team 
And that's the way to be a winner is to form the right team based on the right foundations, the right ideologies, the right concepts, and grow with your partner. But we associate too much value into the symbols, the trappings of a thing. We do this, we do this in fitness. Most people who have muscles aren't strong. Most people who have muscles are on steroids. They never even had to get strong to build those muscles. We do this with money and wealth. The financial crisis of 2008, people living beyond their means, people obsessed with having a nice car and a nice home before having real financial stability, security, having a diversified portfolio, strong portfolio, not based on too many speculative assets that were, um, that could, um, that which values could be compromised through um, speculation in the market. So, it's about foundations. We all have our personal truth, but at the end of the day, there is a common truth. So, can't get something for nothing. And most importantly, going back to that Bob Marley quote, the problem is people are being hated when they are real and are being loved when they are fake. Jesus was a rebel. Donald Trump was a president. 